A Holden Commodore was the last car to roll off the production line today as car making came to an end in Australia. About 950 workers stayed until the end, while 800 have left since the company's announcement in 2013 that it would close. Thousands of people employed by component suppliers have also had to cut staff or close altogether. You can't take out what was uh, a very important uh, fact of life for South Australia, that is the car industry, without supplying the answer, what does the future look like? And we know what it looks like. It's going to be things like uh, high-tech manufacturing. It's going to be our defence industries. Labor says the closure of the heavily subsidised car industry in Australia was an avoidable tragedy. Labor's industry spokesman claims Labor would have kept the car industry open. He says neoliberalism has failed and a future Labor government will put taxpayers' money into supporting manufacturing. I spoke to the Shadow Minister for Industry, Innovation and Science, Senator Kim Carr, earlier today. Kim Carr, thank you for joining the business. Thank you. You said that the car industry was able to survive seven decades but was only able to survive five years of the coalition. But isn't it fair to say that the only reason it was able to survive those seven decades is with huge public subsidies that one day had to end? No, that's not true. All around the world, governments make choices. We are one, at this point, we are one of 19 countries in the world that can make a car from the point of intellectual conception through to the showroom floor. That is, we have the capacity to design and build, maintain our vehicles. Very few countries in the world can do that. All of the countries in the world do so with significant co-investment. And by international standards, Australia's support for the automotive industry was very modest, less than the price of a footy ticket on a per capita basis. Andrew Charlton, former Labor economic advisor, disagrees with you on this. He says that by the end, by today, Australia had the most subsidised car industry in the world in that it was $50,000 by his calculation per worker. That's a huge amount. I know you're, you're using a per capita amount, but that's a big subsidy, isn't it, for the car yeah, industry? Yeah, well, I disagree with him. And furthermore, that's the international comparison that is widely recognised. So there's all sorts of ways. You know, there's lies and damn lies, and then there's statistics, as we well know. There's an ideological argument here about the importance of the automotive industry. Now, I'm of the view that the automotive industry represented a strategically important part of our manufacturing. It provided 15% of our R&D. Well, why is it, though, that the car industry is treated differently than a lot of other industries? A lot of other industries would love some government support. Why should the car industry be treated differently? Tell me this. Which industries don't get government support? Go through the Productivities Commission's approach to these issues. They list out the support. You know, we were spending more money on sheep and goats than we were on the auto industry. As I say, the level of support for the auto industry... Isn't that an argument, though, to actually remove support no, no, for these a, other industries it's as well? A, it's a recognition of the realities of real-world economics. Real-world economics. Not the fantasies of textbook economists. Well, let, let's look at the future. You have announced this $1 billion for a future manufacturing fund, mm. which you say will offer equity, concessional loans yes. and loan guarantees. Yes. How are you going to ensure that you're not backing companies, industry, sectors that are in no other way feasible? Well, let's think about what's happening at the moment. The Clean Energy Corporation provides support because the banks don't. Highly profitable. It makes money for the government. It makes money for the people of Australia. Aren't you concerned about the idea of government being involved in picking winners and losers, as it were, for industry? Isn't that up to the we free market? We don't want to pick losers. Determine? Well, we don't want to there pick is losers. that risk, though, isn't there? By no. investing this $1 billion into concessional loans, taking equity positions in companies, how are you going to ensure that the money well, isn't we have, wasted? We have, a, we have an independent board run by experts who actually know what they're doing, but people actually understand industry. Not people that live in the fairy frost world, but do they, do they do understand it better than those people like financiers, banks, who whose bread and butter... Financiers and banks. If bread and butter is actually investing in these no, companies. That, Why would government well, know see, it better? Their idea, their idea of the welfare of the nation is speculation in screen jockey industries, not in building industrial capacity, not in the welfare of our people. It's about playing with 
the stock exchange in other people's countries. It's not about building the economic welfare of our nation. Kim Carr, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.